here is the midday news. First, the top stories. Ogun begins harvest of rice at its Egoa plantation in Gewa Axis. Buhari says the proposed ECOWA single currency by 2020 is not feasible. Federal 36 states, 774 councils share 558 billion naira revenue for the month of October. In foreign, Kenya's Supreme Court fails to hear petition to stop Thursday poll. Another Republican senator rebukes President Trump. Good afternoon, I am Chenya Ibon, bringing you the news in details shortly. Ogun State Government has begun harvesting of rice at its 90-hectare demonstration farm at Egoa in Yewa axis of the state as part of moves to reduce the state's dependence on imported rice and crash the prices. Also, the state government is clearing 2,000 hectares of land for a cassava plantation at Awowo, near Abelkuta, the state capital. Agriculture Commissioner Mrs. Adekweju Adebaju also says the state government is partnering with the organized private sector for the massive production of rice, cashew, cassava, oil palm, cotton, and gogo. Adebaju made this known while receiving members of Ogun State House of Assembly Committee on Agriculture, who are monitoring the implementation of the 2017 budget. The commissioner says that youth in the state are being encouraged to participate in the anchor borrower program of the Central Bank of Nigeria for training and obtain credit facilities. Ogun State House of Assembly has begun considering Governor Ibikunle Amoson's request for the buyment of 19.5 billion naira from the capital votes of some of the ministries, departments, and agencies in the state's 2017 budget. 12.02 billion naira capital votes is taken from the MDAs and is added to the capital votes of 16.5 billion naira earlier appropriated for the Works and Infrastructure Ministry. Also, 7.2 billion naira of the environment is added to the recurrent expenditure of 102.9 billion naira to cater for the October 2016 salaries and allowances of civil servants who went on strike, the take-off grants of the local council development areas, and other expenses. The bill on Tuesday scaled through the first and second reading during the Assembly's plenary. The House Finance and Appropriation Committee Chairman, Ulushola Bankoli, debating the bill, explains that it is just a movement of unspent fund from the ministries, departments, and agencies to another which did not affect the size of the budget. House Minority Leader on Lawale Alausa equally supported the bill for the completion of the road projects in the state. The Speaker, Suraj Adekumbi, refers the bill to the Finance and Appropriation Committee for further consideration. City Harvest Church International, Asheru Abelkuta, is holding its annual homecoming and camp meeting in Ogun State capital. The five-day program, which began on Wednesday and will end on Sunday, October 29, is taking place at the venue of the church at Oaks, at Oak Squared Hall, beside GT Bank, Asheru Abelkuta. The church, in a release by its senior pastor, Reverend Peace Toluade, says the program, which kicked off 5 p.m. on Wednesday, October 25, will close by 1 p.m. on Sunday. The schedule of the program is 5 to 8 p.m. daily on Wednesday to Sunday, 6 to 7.15 a.m. on Thursday, and Friday 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday, and 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Sunday. Ministry and other program include Senior Pastor of Day Spring International Church, Patakot and Lagos, as well as Pastor Debo Karui, who is the senior pastor of Jesus People Christian Church at Belkuta. President Muhammad Buhari has opposed the proposed single currency by ECOWAS member states by year 2020. Buhari told a meeting of Presidential Task Force on ECOWAS single currency in NAMI, the Niger Republic capital, that the conditions that pushed Nigeria into withdrawing from the process in the past have not changed. The president asked other ECOWAS nations to tread softly on the project, citing the challenges facing the European Union in reaching a similar goal. He explains that the necessary economic fundamental ECOWAS countries continues to differ over the years, 
making the 2020 date for a single ECOWAS currency not feasible. Gunmen have killed two police officers on guard duty on Obajano Kaba Highway in Kogi State. The gunmen, numbering 15, also abducted an extra trade engineer from the construction site of AG Dangote Company, which is handling the construction of a 45 kilometer concrete road from Obajano Cement Plant to Okene. Spokesman of the State Police Command, Williams Aya, says the late police officers, Inspector Ezekiel Negada and Sergeant Guinea John, were killed while resisting attack by the gunmen in the area. The State Police Commissioner, Ali Janga, according to him, had mobilized a team of police special units to track the gunmen to rescue the abducted Portuguese engineer. 20 people have died and 12 injured in a ghastly auto crash in Sakoto State. The accident, which occurred last Sunday along Kware Guadabawa Highway, involved a truck and sports utility van. The SUV was conveying a newlywed bride and members of family. The accident occurred when the tire of the truck coming from Ilela local, local government area burst and rammed into the SUV. Also in Kogi State, 11 people have lost their lives and 23 others injured in a fetal auto crash on the Auchi Okene Highway. The auto crash, which occurred on Monday night, involved a truck marked XF 914KTN loaded with cattle, foodstuff, and passengers, and a car marked BWR 756B. Sector Commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Olusegu Martins, addressing newsmen in Lokoja, says the truck hit the car from behind. Martins explains that all those killed in the accident were passengers in the truck while all the occupants of the car were unhurt. You're still listening to the Midday News on Rock City 101.9 FM. Up next, we bring you foreign business and sports news. Please do stay with us. In foreign, Kenya's Supreme Court has been hit by a shortage of judges to hear a petition calling for the cancellation of repeat election planned for Thursday. Chief Justice David Marga said that the court did not have quorum to hear the petition. The court has seven judges. He said that only one of his colleagues was present and the others could not make it to the court for various reasons. On Tuesday, the bodyguard of Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Umilu was rushed to a hospital in the capital, Nairobi, after being shot. The circumstances surrounding the shooting was unclear, but reports say that Ms. Umilu was not in the car at the time of the attack. The main opposition candidate, Rayla Odinga, is boycotting the rerun. But President Uhuru Kenyatta insists the election will go ahead. China has revealed its new senior leadership committee, breaking with tradition by not including a clear successor to President Xi Jinping. The omission cements Mr. Xi's grip on China for the next five years and possibly beyond, a day after his name was written into the constitution. Five new appointments were made to the seven member politics. Bureau Standing Committee, China's most powerful body. Apart from 64-year-old Mr. Tsai, the Premier Li Keqiang, 62, was the only committee member to retain his position. There had been speculations that Mr. Tsai would elevate his putish Chen Nina and Guangdong Party Secretary Hu Chunghua, both of whom are in their 50s, young enough to be credible successors. But the six dark suited men who worked out on stage on Wednesday were all in the 60s and are all likely to retire at the end of this five year term. A US Republican senator says he will not seek re election, delivering a fierce attack on President Donald Trump. Arizona Senator Jeff Flake said reckless, outrageous, and undignified behavior at the top of the US government was dangerous to democracy. Mr. Trump has previously called Mr. Flake toxic. The U.S. president is already embroiled in a row with another Republican senator, Bob Corker. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said it was probably a good move Mr. Flake was standing down, suggesting he would not win the re-election. In business, 
Federal government, 36 states and 774 local governments have shared revenue totaling 558 billion naira as a relocation from the Federation account for the month of October. The revenue is 130.42 billion naira lower than 637.7 billion naira shared by the three tiers of government in September. The breakdown shows that federal government received 198.04 billion naira, 36 state governments 100.45 billion naira, 774 local governments 77.4 billion naira, while the oil producing states got 35.4 billion naira as 13 percent derivation. The Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, announced the revenue sharing at the end of the monthly meeting of the Federation Account Allocation Committee in Abuja. He explains that the shared revenue include 423.9 billion naira from statutory accounts, 83.3 billion naira from value added tax, and 50.8 billion naira from the foreign exchange equalization accounts. Idris puts the fund in the excess crude account at $2.3 billion, while $68 million is on a petroleum profit tax fund. Finally, sports news. NFF General Secretary Mohamed Sanisi says that talks of a return of Inyama to Nigeria's national male team remains the decision of technical advisor Gennard Rowe. The football house, according to Sanusi, will not in any way interfere in Ross' choice of players as well as goalkeepers for the national team. He says that the NFF does not interfere in the choice of players or goalkeepers for the national teams. With Super Eagles first choice goalkeeper Carl Ikeme recovering from leukemia, FC Ifanyuba goalkeeper Ikejuku Ezemwa and Daniel Apeyi of South Africa Premier Super League side Chipa United have both featured for Nigeria in recent matches. Enyama announced his retirement from the Super Eagles in 2015 and has since not returned to the national team. Former FC Ifanyuba coach Rafael Ebatin has been officially unveiled as the new coach of Nigeria Professional Football League Club, Abia Warriors. Everton was unveiled by officials of Abia Warriors on Tuesday at the Umwahe Township Stadium. Abia Warriors Club chairman Emeka Inyama revealed the Brazilian coach has signed a two year contract ahead of the 2017 18 NPFL season. He takes over from Abdullahi before, who guided the team to a 12th place finish last season in the top flight. That was the midday news, and just before we go, the media stories once again. Ogun began harvest of rice at its Egoa plantation in Yewa Axis. Buhari said the proposed ECOWAS single currency by 2020 not feasible. Federal 36 states, 774 councils share 558 billion naira revenue for month of October. In foreign, we also reported that Kenya's Supreme Court failed to get petition to stop Thursday's poll. Another Republican senator rebuked Pres President Trump. For more stories and to listen to us live, please log on to our website www.rockcityfmradio.com. Thank you very much for listening. I am Chene Igbo. Good afternoon.